Welcome back to Engineering Ethics, the online edition. Today we move on to part A of chapter 2, which is gifts and bribes. The two ideas seem simple, yet the difference between them can be such a fine line that it is very easy to cross. So let's go ahead and look at some scenarios. I think it's uh, one of the best ways to learn a new concept is by looking at possible scenarios of this concept. Uh, the first scenario we have here is a sales visit where you are scouting some goods for your company. And as you are leaving the office of the representative you were just meeting with, uh, they offer you a mug that has a approximate value of $5. Additionally, that mug has the logo of the company, their company on it. Is it okay to accept it as a gift? Or is it considered to be a form of bribery? Well, generally in this case, it is okay to accept it because one would argue that it is of minimal value. In addition, it has the logo of the company on it. What this means, it is part of their advertising campaign. So they offer it to everyone. So generally, it is okay to accept it. Everyone gets that. It's no special treatment and it's not nothing uh, over the top. Would that change if the value of the mug or instead of the mug, it would be a, a bowl that is worth $350, but still has the company logo engraved on it? Well, even in this case, it is still part of their advertising campaign. And since they have the logo on it, they probably uh, <clears throat> give it out to uh, individuals as part of advertising. But you need to double check your company's policies. If something of this value, and it depends on the company or uh, the institution you work for, if the value is, uh, is assessed to be too much, then you should probably not accept it, even if it has the logo on it. But generally, if it's part of their advertising, it is no special treatment, then it's okay. Now, if no logo was present, then it is a different story. And one can assume foul play. Therefore, it is healthier to either refuse it or go back to your uh, superiors to get information on the company guidelines under such scenarios. In the next scenario, we go into another sales meeting, but this time you run into the lunchtime. The sales representative that you are meeting with invites you to go grab lunch at a fast food chain. Let's say KFC, McDonald's. Each person pays their own tab. Would that be considered acceptable? Well, yeah, it is okay, it, definitely. Uh, unless your company operates in a domain that requires extra strictness in this area, let's say you work for the government. Additionally, it is a fast food restaurant, so you won't pay more than $10. So it is okay. Furthermore, you are paying for your own bill. Even it, if it was a French restaurant and you're paying your own bill, it is still a very safe zone. The issue may arise when the representative would pay your bill. Here it is highly important to check your company's ethical guidelines for assistance. Another scenario, while well, all of our scenarios today have a sales thematic, in this one, a sales representative invited you to play tennis at a local municipal court. Yet, you may have a decision coming up soon that is related to their company. Is it okay for you to go? Take a minute to think about it. One argument would be that it is completely fine because the municipal courts are free of charge and everyone can go there. Unless there is a company rule 
for decision makers that are involved in active cases, the answer would be the answer for this question would be the same if you both go to an exclusive club, but each person pays their way. In other words, they don't pay for you. Yet, if they offer to pay for you, then that would be suspicious. And it is highly recommended to avoid going until the decision has been made. For example, you're deciding if you're uh, gonna accept their bid or you're gonna buy from their company instead of from another company. It is okay to go after the decision was made so that no one would assume you were influenced by going to a prestigious uh, tennis court. The final scenario for today involves a trip offer to a seminar. A company invites you to a sales seminar in Cleveland. In the first question, your company will pay for it. So in this case, all seems well, and your company is on board. So go ahead, but what if the seminar was in the beautiful island of Maui in the state of Hawaii? Well, as long as your company is still paying for it and they are still on board, then all is well. But if the sales company will pay for your trip, then it's a different story and here you need to look at other factors for assessment. It can be part of their sales strategy, so all is normal. In this case, you need to check if your company is okay with other companies paying for your travels. Additionally, you need to check if everyone else is receiving similar treatment or maybe a portion of people in your same stature are receiving similar treatment. If you're receiving special treatment aside from everyone else, then this is suspicious. What if they offered you to get your whole family with you on that trip? Well, in that case, it would be weird and you should dodge it. Why would they invite your family? That is no longer professional. So based on the four scenarios, can you develop your own definition for what is a gift and what is a bribe? Well, generally, a gift is something of value that is given with zero expectations. Whereas a bribe has a name to influence an individual or gain a potential benefit. In class, we viewed a nice animated video on bribery in construction and how can it cause people to lose their livelihood and affects their lives negatively. The link for the video is in the description below and it is the second episode of Bribe Busters. By now the question arises how do we avoid bribery and bribery-like situations? Well, we have a series of steps. First and foremost, check the gifts and bribes policies at your company. If you are in a governmental position, then usually the policy is a zero tolerance policy. In other words, you cannot accept anything, no matter how big or small. Some companies allow gifts up to a price limit let's say $500 as an example, and some require you to send a request to management before accepting anything. Another useful tool for you to use is the New York Times test, where you ask yourself, what will happen if this gift headlines the next release of the newspaper? Well, if you are in a government position, that is probably bad news because it is not okay for government officials to receive gifts uh, from uh, certain people or certain entities. That would be very fishy for the public. If it is bad news, simply don't accept it. 
With the New York Times test, we reached the end of part A of chapter 2, and I'll see you all in part B.